Action Effects. Hey there, everyone. Dan from Animation Gone Wrong. And in this first of what we hope will be a series on action effects, we're going to show you how to add some bullet holes and ricochets and how to make a still shot look like it was shot handheld. Let's take a look at the original shot before any effects were added. It's our bad guy running up the stairs. It's okay, but the camera's still, so the action is a little bit flat. We need to add a sense of urgency. So the first thing we'll do is add some bullet holes and ricochets. In order to add our bullet holes, I've brought my raw footage into Adobe After Effects. You'll notice that we actually shot this on a tripod. This was for two reasons. One, there was only one of us to run the camera. And second, we actually wanted everything still so we could add effects in and then add the camera motion afterwards. This actually makes it easier to synchronize the bullet holes with the background stuff. So I've got my footage in here and uh, we want the bullet hole to appear just as uh, past his head to make it like it's more of a close call. So uh, we'll go forward about seven frames or so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right there would be a real good spot for it to appear. So I'll bring my bullet hole. In this case, it's just a little uh, green screen clipped out bullet hole. Uh, because it is green, I can now go and take my uh, effects. And in this case, it'll be keying. And I want to use key light. We'll drag that onto my bullet hole. And then where it says screen color, I'll grab the little eyedropper and grab the green. And there, poof, it's gone, and all I'm left with is a bullet hole. Now I want that to appear over his head, so I'm going to move it up. And uh, I think it was just over that knot hole on the uh, left, so we'll put that there. It's a little large, so we'll scale it down a little bit to around there. And if we just click somewhere else to get rid of the little marks. Um, still a little big, so we'll take it down a couple more notches, maybe down to about 44, 42. There we go. That looks a little better. And maybe nudge it over just a smidgen. There we go. That's a good bullet hole. Now, we don't want it to be there the whole time, so we will basically chop everything off, drag that forward so that prior to this, the bullet hole's gone. And here we have it appearing. But a bullet hole usually just doesn't appear on its own. Typically, there's some debris or something coming out of it, so we want to add that. I have brought in some debris. It's from our friends at Detonation Films. Uh, this isn't even the high def stuff. This is actually low def, but for the size of the effect, this is perfect. So what we're going to do is uh, scroll forward till we get to the point where the usable effect is, is and that is around right there. So we'll back up one. You can just see it starting. So that's where we want to go. So we'll chop off everything prior to that. We want it to actually appear one frame before that. So the debris actually starts to come out prior to the bullet hole forming because it's the debris being removed that actually makes the hole. Now we've got that. It's facing the wrong way. So we will just do a quick rotation and we'll actually Instead of just going a full 180, we'll actually bring it on a little bit of an angle because the direction is sort of coming out that way. So we want it to have a bit of an effect like that. It's too big, so we will scale it down to about oh there or so. That should be fine. And we know that the start of it is right around there, so we will bring it over and bring it up. And that looks lovely. If we scroll forward, we can see how it looks. That would be great. Except that, of course, we've got all that nasty black stuff around it. Now, you might be tempted to use a Luma key. However, do not. They don't work that well. Instead, we're going to right click on our debris, go to blending mode, and we're going to select screen. You see it actually works much better. And we can see the debris coming out very nicely. It's nice and bright. We might even want to back that up one more frame to have it start. Let's try that. So, I 
That's pretty good there. Might want to nudge it up just a little to get it uh, lined up with our hole a little bit better. And there we have it. Now, because this clip goes on for quite a ways and we really don't need it for that long, around here we can actually start fading it out because we really don't need any more than that. So that's good for there. We will actually um, split the clip by splitting the layer. <clears throat> and now everything that's extra, we don't need. Done. Easy. And there we have one bullet hole. Uh, what we want to do is actually fade that out. Easiest way to do it is to actually mess around with the opacity. And as you can see, we don't want to go too much further because he's actually going to start blocking it. So, I mean, we could leave it as is, but there's a bit of a, a cutoff. So what we'll do is we'll start at the very end of the clip. We'll start our opacity there. We'll take it down to zero. And then we'll back up a few frames to about there. Bring our opacity back to 100. So now we have the two keyframes there. So the opacity will just kind of fade out. And that should be more than enough. We do the same on the other side. We've got a different bullet hole for that. A little bit uh, more elongated. And we're going to do the exact same thing here. We are going to use key light to mat out the green. And we will bring that bullet hole over. And we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to put it there, bring it up a little, back. And again, it's a little large. What we're actually going to do in this time is we're actually going to scale it down a little bit first, just to make it smaller. Then we're going to unlink the scales and shrink it horizontally to give it a bit more of a flat feel. There it is. And same idea here. We want it to be fairly close call. So maybe right around there. And you know what? We're going to just use our same debris again. And we will take that again forward to where the debris starts. There it is. Take out everything else. And same thing with our bullet hole. It doesn't need to be there the whole time. So we will go in one frame's worth there. And we will take our debris. Oops. And uh, in this case, I'm just going to reverse the scale a little bit. It doesn't really matter how you do this. But because we rotated this one, if we keep this one just reverse the scale, it'll look a little bit different, and that's what we want. So we'll see where that's going to come out. We will set our blending mode to screen, and we have some lovely debris coming out now. And we will bring it up and over, and maybe just a little bit higher up, maybe a little bit uh, smaller. Something like that. Close enough. And there we have our two bullet holes. Coming in after the fact. Now again, you can play around with this a little bit, move them wherever you like, adjust the uh, transparency or the opacity on some of the bullet hole clips and the uh, debris to uh, suit it. But just a quick demo on how you can put those in. Definitely a little more interesting and uh, 
It's no wonder he's ducking for cover. Now that we've added our bullet holes and their ricochets and the dust, uh, we want to add that handheld look to it. That part's actually fairly straightforward. What we're going to do is take the entire selection of entries in our clip here, and we're going to pre-compose it. And we can just call it pre-comp. Actually, what we'll do is we'll call it pre-motion. Move all the attributes into the new composition. So now we have one piece of uh, work here that we can deal with here, and everything that we've done is now inside it, which is exactly how we want to treat this. Now that we've got that, we're going to take another little very exciting piece of video that I filmed. It's a picture of a picture. Yeah, really interesting. But what's cool about it is, is I handheld it. Why? So I can capture the motion from the handheld. So what I'm going to do is take my subtle, I'm going to go to the tracker, I'm going to track the motion, and I want to take care of the position and rotation. Scale probably isn't that big a deal here because, in fact, it's not going to change. And so that's fine. We want to do that. So we will take our uh, pointers here and we will basically go and find a nice uh, convenient place to track, which would be maybe, oh, I know, the corner of the picture. That looks like a great place to go because it's very well defined and uh, you can easily snag one of the corners. So we'll do that. There's one corner. Actually, you know what? The other one looks like it's even more well defined. Let's try that. There we go. That looks great. Nice contrasty area right there. One corner. Now I'll take the other corner and do the same thing. Take it over here. Another good corner right there. That should do it. So what we'll do is we'll get it to analyze. We'll let it play forward. And you can see that it's tracking the two corners of the picture very, very nicely. We don't need much. Just enough for the length of the clip that we're dealing with here. That tracked perfectly. So we'll rewind back to the beginning and now we'll take a layer and go new, null object. We go back to our uh, tracking uh, image here. We're going to edit the target and we want to target it to the null layer. Now that we've done that, we say apply. Apply both X and Y. We've done that and now you can see that as we uh, run through the video, the null actually tracks to that thing perfectly. Now, we don't actually want to see the picture anymore, so we'll turn it off. <clears throat> and now we have our original footage back there. But nothing's happened yet because we've only applied the motion to the null. So what we'll do is we will make the parent for our pre-motion be null. And now you can see it starts to move around as we scrub through the video. However, you'll notice at times we get a little uh, colored bars around either the bottom of the edges or the sides. That's because the image is actually drifting and moving outside of that. So we can do a real easy trick here. All we'll do is take our pre-motion, go into transform, and we'll adjust the scale up a tiny, tiny little bit, maybe like about 105%. Honestly, You'll never notice the difference, particularly when you're working in a larger scale uh, video format like uh, full HD, you know, 1080p, which is what we're using here. And now, as we scrub through it, we go all the way through and we never actually hit outside the frame. And that's it. 
We've done a little cleanup, like making the bullet holes disappear when our bad guy walks in front of them. But other than that, we're basically set. So let's take a look at the clip now, after adding a little color correction. There, perfect. You can see that by adding in the bullet holes before we put the motion in, the tracking for everything looks perfect. Here's how it looked in the final production. Thanks for watching.